Sometimes when we want to move, we want something to happen, we pray and we beg God to open and close, open and close the doors while our hand is on the door pulling and trying to open the door. And uh, it's not really God opening the doors because you don't need to pull open any door when he opens the door. It, it will fall wide open. And I'll tell our story of uh, how we moved to Oregon. After we adopted the girls, we were embroiled in a huge case where we had accused the orphanage operators. It was a Bertha Holt orphanage, and we met Mrs. Holt. She was older then, and she was very sad to learn that the uh, operators, Mr. and Mrs. Prado, in Tecate, Mexico, who had run the orphanage for decades, were in fact molesting the kids. It was documented as fact. They all got put in prison, and they're all dead. They did satanic curses, and uh, if you don't think curses are real, Look at Larry and I, our perfect example. Why did my husband get tongue cancer just a couple of months after moving to Oregon, after we got the orphanage closed? But anyway, I'll tell a little bit about a story, how we were able to buy this house. This house was for sale, close to a million dollars. And there's no way we could afford a million dollar home. And, uh, well, we could have if we wanted to, but that would mean Larry couldn't retire and we'd have to cash in everything that we had and uh, have a $300,000 mortgage because we only had 550000 to put down. And uh, they had paid 720 for this house. 14, 15 years ago, so for sure it was worth their asking price of close to, I think they were asking 950000 and uh, they had two offers. And how do you think we're living here? A miracle, an absolute miracle, but that's another story. But I'll tell the one about uh, San Diego when we lived in a place called San Diego Country Estates. It's a private community with uh, equestrian center, golf courses, tennis courts. And uh, it's at the base of uh, Mount Laguna in Ramona outside the Indian Reservation. And it was uh, built up in the 1970s when before the gas crunch happened. So... All these investors and uh, contractors built these beautiful homes out there and they lost their butts because the gas crunch came and this was uh, at least, what, 30 miles from downtown San Diego. So nobody could afford the gases and, the, and I remember the gas was rationed. I think it was 74 when the gas was being rationed. And that's when the house on Oriente Way in Ramona was built. Anyway, we we bought it. We were able to buy it pennies on the dollar. It was six months old when we got it from the bank. I can't remember what we paid for it. Uh, 150000 back in seventy. Eight. Not. Sh I, I'm not real sure. Anyway, we had a uh, small loan on it because we had taken the equity from our other homes. We'd, we'd purchased two other homes and then we combined them. So, back in 1983, 80, yeah, 84, we wanted to get out of San Diego and real estate was not selling at all. People were just dumping their houses and uh, 
I didn't want to do that. We just adopted the two girls. We wanted to keep them in Christian school. That is, uh, we're Seventh-day Adventists, and most Seventh-day Adventists put their kids in the Seventh-day Adventist school systems, which is one of the largest Christian school systems around, uh, other than the Catholic schools. So uh, about 80% of the children that attend the Adventist schools are non-Adventist, and everybody's okay with that. But it's quite expensive. Um, back in the 80s, it was seven, $800 per student. And I had our brother living with me, so I had four kids in Christian school. So the two girls we adopted, plus my brother and my son, was my husband said, no, we're not going to uh, put the kids in public school. And uh, so there was no way we could sell the house there and move up to Oregon without selling it at what we needed for our price. And it was late September and I was, uh, it was cold and uh, I was making a little fire and I got some paper out of the trash and I started ripping it and right when I was ripping it to put it in the flames there was this ad that says house for sale or trade in Beaver Creek, Oregon for a house in San Diego. But, whoa! It's about three lines. I still have the ad. I don't know where it is, but anyway. It was an old ad. It was about two or three months old. So I called the number. It was a San Diego number, and it was some woman, and her daughter was Sue Sheckley. She lived up in Beaver Creek, Oregon. And she and her family wanted to move to San Diego. And uh, she had put the ad in the paper. So let me check the time. Okay. Don't want to make this too long. So anyway, I called her up and uh, the mom came out and she looked at our house and she says, wow, this is exactly what Sue and her husband, I think it was Larry, Sue and Larry need. Uh, because they, she's a professional golfer, and so she needs to be on the golf course. Well, our equities were exactly the same to the penny. And Larry had gone to, um, Larry was with Motorola. He began working in Motorola right after he graduated college in 74, 75. And uh, so he'd been with Motorola for almost 10 years. He was vested. He didn't want to quit Motorola, but I thought, you know, we should, that was the only way we could move to Oregon was for him to quit. So he went to, uh, he came up to Oregon and he found a job with Day Wireless right there in Estacada, right? That town right there. And Beaver Creek is right on that other side of that hill right there. In fact, Ferguson Road is right there. And there's Estacada, Day Wireless. And they offered Larry a job. I think he was making about 35000 a year back then when he started with Motorola. And uh, they offered him, well, they offered him 10000 less than what he was making. So, which would mean that we would have to put the kids in, pri in public school and no private school. And we found that Shackley's house was exactly what we wanted. It was five bedroom on several acres with a view of downtown Portland and Mount St. Helens. It had everything I wanted. It had three fireplaces. <laughs> Place was a leaky tiki. It was an older house, but it was exactly what I wanted. It had uh, cedar siding and shake roof and the view and vaulted ceilings. And the kitchen was gorgeous with a huge fireplace wall. So Larry came up to interview with Day Wireless and to show pictures to the Shackley's uh, video of our house and to take video of their house on Ferguson Road. And everything was to a T. And I said, that's an answer from 
from the Lord, Larry. He wants us to take that, that job. But Larry says, Cheryl, it means sacrificing something that I don't want to sacrifice, and that is putting the kids in public school. And he says, I can't take that job. I said, Larry, God opened the door. Look, he found the house. We're trading houses. It's exactly to the penny. Our equities were dollar for dollar, not a penny more. We were going to trade refrigerator, dog houses, chainsaw, and a they were leaving a chainsaw and a couple of cords of wood, and we were going to leave our water softener and uh, appliances. Um, the kids, my kids were leaving their, their boogie boards, their beach stuff, and uh, Shackley's kids were leaving their snowboard stuff. Oh, and by the way, my kids were going to Escondido Adventist Academy, and that is where the Sh Sue Sheckley went to school. So she used to be Adventist too. It was just kind of a bunch of weird coincidences that I thought, wow. So Larry told Day Wireless that he wanted them to match pay, um, that he needed the 45000 a year or he wasn't going to move. We just couldn't swing it because I was had to work too and uh, they wouldn't budge and Larry said no I'm not going to take the job I, I was just heartbroken so we called the shekels up Sheckley's and it was the end of end of September and Larry Sheckley had to be on the job he was a parole officer and he had to be on the job by January 1st or the position would be filled and he wouldn't be able to take the job and they had tried for six months to sell their house well it had cat pee Ugh, it was awful our house was nice and clean but anyway we needed five bedrooms and there's not very many five bedroom houses and uh, and on acreage and with vaulted ceilings and everything that we needed and I said, Larry, see, this is an answer for, from God. And he says, no, Cheryl, the Lord is telling me no, not to take that job with day wireless. I said, but Larry, we can sacrifice. We can, we can put the kids in public school. We don't have to pay tithe. We don't have to do this. And my husband was just adamant. So we called the Shackleys up late September. And I was just sobbing. I was so mad at God. I, I think I gave him the middle finger. I said, God, you put a carrot in front of this donkey. And now this is all just going to go away. And I didn't trust God. But I should have. Anyway, Larry called Day Wireless up. Told him he would not be taking the job. So he put that to rest, and uh, I started unpacking everything, because I, I was for sure we were going to leave be leaving for Oregon. We had tried for 14 years to move to Oregon. Larry had some family here, his uncle and cousins. So I was just heartbroken and angry at God. I was just, I wouldn't even pray, I would just, basically give God the middle finger. What a what an idiot I was. But I didn't trust him. It was mid-October. Larry went to a Motorola meeting in Los Angeles. And one of the bigwigs pulled Larry aside and they said, Larry, we heard that you uh, were interviewing with Day Wireless up in Oregon. He said, yeah, Larry was scared. He thought, oh, my goodness. And they said, Larry, we can't lose you. You're our best engineer we've ever had. Larry is a genius, and he's been into radio stuff since he was a kid. Since he was five, four and five years old, he was interested in electronics. And he has a degree in biomedical electronics and engineering degree. Biomedical is repairing uh, medical equipment. 
and uh, found out that that was not a good job to have. Doctors don't pay. They're not good businessmen. So anyway, they said, uh, Larry, we, we can't lose you. Um, what if we create a position for you in, in Portland, uh, give you 20% pay, pay for your move, pay for the, the equity or, or pay for the whatever cost it is in selling your house and whatever. And, and we'll give you two weeks off plus travel time. Can you be in Portland in uh, New Year's? Absolutely. <laughs> we called the shekels up. The move is on. We're moving. So in the meantime, Day Wireless found uh, a person to take the position with their, uh, I think, mobile radios. I don't know what sector it was, but this was back in the 80s, early 80s, before cell phones really took off. And they moved this single guy up to uh, Escondido there, gave him the job, and uh, Larry and I packed up the kids. I drove the motor home. We had two huge trucks, vans full of our junk, and a and a nasty VW bus that backfired. <laughs> and uh, we arrived on our house on Ferguson Road, Christmas Eve, 1984. And the new guy working for Day Wireless began his job around New Year's too. And the shekels moved into uh, San Diego, into our house. They called us and said, wow, what'd you do? Uh, back up out of the house with a mop? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I left it so clean. I had some surprises. They had cat pee. <laughs> Ugh, nothing worse than cat pee. So this was... Uh, Christmas, and in February we had two feet of snow. We were just thrilled to death, and our new kids that we, two girls that we were just getting to make part of our family. They were, one was eleven by then, and five. Deanna was five. She was. We, they got them. We got them from an orphanage in Mexico. They'd never been outside of Tucati. They'd never seen snow or experienced anything with the beautiful Northwest. I've never seen such a beautiful day. So anyway, life was going just wonderful. Larry working for Motorola here in Oregon with extra pay and everything. Then he got a little sore on his tongue. Worst case scenario, it was tongue cancer. The most deadly kind, squamous cell carcinoma. Larry was off work for six months. Motorola never skipped a payment. In fact, Larry even kept his company car. They paid the gas, tires, and oil, the insurance, and I could drive it anywhere. And Larry even got 25% of his incentive pay because they, they really liked Larry. And Day Wireless, they had to let the guy go because their position within the uh, sector, the mobile sector, didn't hold up, so they couldn't continue keeping the guy. And they had to let him go. So this was in June that they let the guy go, day wireless, no more job. What if Larry had taken that position with day wireless? No job in June, in July, diagnosed with tongue cancer. Then I knew I should have trusted God the whole time. He knew ahead of time what was going to happen. He knew that Larry was going to have oral cancer. 
He knew all this ahead of time, and I didn't trust him. Now I have a breast lump, and I need to trust him again. But I'm tired, and my pain is too much. I have rheumatoid arthritis, spondylolosis, myo-something, my uh, spine. I need surgery. And I need a knee replacement. I have torn rotators. I use Cipro because I have Crohn's. And I had an artivenous malformation that caused me severe anemia. Anyway, that's one of my stories, and I'm going to stick to it because it's the honest God's truth. What if I had trusted God instead of flipping him off? I deserve to get struck by lightning for not trusting him, but he loves me enough to care. He cares for me. And as I journey on my way home, I need to trust him more. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I urge the Rouge Six and the Watts to trust God no matter how painful things are for them. Don't be nasty, Cindy. Take Sandy and Frank and Frank Jr.'s example. You know, this nanosecond of Life on planet Earth is going to be over, and we're going to be on our way home. And we'll have the memories of what took place here on Earth, because we'll have known what sin really meant. You look at the stars up there, we'd be foolish to think that there's no other life. The, those suns those that we see, the stars, those are, there's planets there, there's other life there. <laughs> But those are godly beings. Planet Earth is the only place that has sin. And when the plan of salvation is all play, played out and we go home, we will say the price was cheap enough. Even though the pain is gut-wrenching for some of us, I can't imagine losing a child like the Rusiks have. So please pray for them and pray that Cindy will stop blaming the victim. God bless you and trust God.